Good morning, everybody. Time to get started with our warm up, I guess you call it, our pre show. Our pre show. I was hoping my mother in law would be in here, but um, she's not. So when she gets in here, I'll have her come and help me. But I have been hearing this a lot at my house this week the O part, so you guys know what I'm going to sing. Page 411, Oh How I Love Jesus. Page 411. There is a name I love Turn to page 335. 335. Love lifted me. That's a good one. Hey, Mom. 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 Come and help me. I don't know either, but I need some help. Every, head, every woman's head popped up. 
I know. <laughs> well, we're going to do Love Lifted Me because I just said it, but then we're going to do Standing on the Solid Rock. I do. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now say. just a minute y'all know we've we've done this before back when I was a kid or back in my younger years we had a song leader here and every time we sung this song you need to lift your hands baby when it says love lifted me think of what he's done for you did he raise you out of that pit did he protect you did he bring you through something raise your hands and praise him Okay, so when, when we say love lifted me, raise your arms, raise your hands, raise your cane, raise your eyebrows, whatever <laughs> you need to raise, praise, raise and praise. Okay, let's sing verse two. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praise to see, love so mighty. So true merits my soul's best song. Faithful loving service to to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Not everybody raised their hands. I guess. We need to say a prayer for these folks because <laughs> God must not have done anything for them. Just think about it. If you're breathing, God's done something for you. Amen. He allowed you to breathe today. So, kids, Darren, Aaron, Javon, God's done something for you. You need to be raising your hands. All right, that's the last chance. Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves, he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves, he's the master of the sea, fills his will obey, he your savior wants to be. Okay, now I, I, we're gonna do we're gonna do this one, and some of you may um, know this, and some of you may not. Sorry, I don't have it in the book, but um, it's standing on the solid rock. <coughs> I don't know. That's, uh, we'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> Catch us if you can. That's right. Through my disappointment, strife, and discontentment, I cast my every care upon the Lord. No matter what occasion, pain or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock of ages, safe from every soul.
had a chance to sing that second song was love lifted me because of my love for Jesus and love lifted me I can stand on that solid rock folks Amen. you just need to sing I see a lot of shut mouths and that's very unusual for this bunch but you just need to open them <laughs> mouths and sing Let's stand. I challenge you Let's to stand, stand if you, you can you. honey Let's you don't sing have it again. to sing it again but I challenge you to stand Through my disappointment, strife and discontentment, I cast my every care on the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain or deep depression, I'm standing on that solid rock. I'm standing on the rock of ages, from every storm that So I'm going to read it that way you have time to let it soak in. Through my disappointments, strife and discontentment, I cast my every care upon the Lord. Every care, it says. No matter what obsession, pain or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. Amen. Do you fit into that group right there? Woo, I do. Okay. Woo. Now, hey. it says... Now I'm pressing onward. Each step leads me homeward. I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. Day by day, folks, not once a week. I'm sorry, but every day. And close is our relation. Firm is its foundation. So on the solid rock, I'll stay. When we find something good, what do we do? We just keep doing it over and over, don't we? Well, we found a solid rock. We need to stand there and keep doing it over and over. Let's sing it again, girls. Come on. <laughs> Through my disappointments, strife and discontentment, I cast my every care on the Lord. No matter. Thank you. 
seated for just a minute. You know, Randy, I've heard you say several times about we go to a ball game and see our grandkids or our kids play ball, we hoop and holler. Go, go, go. Well, why don't we come to church that way? Amen. Hoop and holler and go, Christ, go. We don't have to sit there like a knot on the log. It's not in the Bible that we do that, so there we go. It's good to have everybody out this morning on, I can say, a snowy morning. <laughs> if you didn't get enough snow this past week for your likes, well, move up to Chicago, move up to Indiana, Ohio. They've got plenty of it for you if you want to get some more. So, uh, Brother Ray, it's time to take our offering. Remember, folks, let these guys bring you the offering plate. This continue and maintain being safe most important thing let's all stand and we'll take our tithes and offerings this morning brother ray would you ask a blessing on tithes You may be seated. Uh, I want to hear the band play a little bit myself. How about you? Do you want to hear this band play? Well, about half of them, but the rest of them will get into it here in a bit. Make it a good one. Hey, all you folks up here in the band, play it like you mean it. Play it like you mean it.
to hear them, but every time I hear them, Randy, it makes me so mad. I'm good at playing a radio, and that's about it. And not real good at that. <laughs> Sometimes I have to have Elaine or Haley show me how. You know. Get a red book, and let's turn to page 545. And if yens want to, yens can play your instruments out there. So just remember that. Page 545, come unto me. Hear the blessed Savior calling me. didn't get all this, did you? Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. That's me. I don't know about you, but the devil's after me all the time. O ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. If you've got burdens, you don't know what to do with them, come bring them to the Lord. He will take care of them. He'll give you some rest. Come no longer tarry, I your load will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Now, the second verse, let's sing out, folks, or I'll have to stop and read that to you, too. Are you disappointed, wandering here and there? Oh, hold on, hold on, that's terrible. I was, I was way off. I was singing a different song. Disappointed, wandering here and there, dragging chains of doubt and loaded down with care. Do unholy feelings struggle in your breast? Bring your case to Jesus, He will give you rest. Come unto me. I will give you rest. 
sing this over and over. Well, you'll finally get it after we sing it enough. Come unto me, I will give you rest. That's the only way you're going to get any rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me, and be blessed. I am meek and lowly. Come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy, and my burden's light. One more time. Come unto me. around him move when he sat down as the music softly played amazing grace last night's fall off the wagon left bruises on his face so when he felt a hand on his shoulder he thought he'd hear Come back when you're sober But a friendly voice said We're glad you're here Welcome to the first church of mercy Where the doors of love sing open wide No matter who you are No matter what you've done You can come inside Welcome to the altar of forgiveness where the fallen can fall and tears are wiped away. Welcome to the first church of mercy, 
Take a seat on the front row of grace. You don't have to have it all together here. There's a lot of us who've been right where you are. And we all came in here hurting, broken, bruised, and scarred. And then the Father reached us with the healing hand of Jesus. And now we're all a part of his family welcome to the first church of mercy where the doors of love swing open wide no matter who you are no matter what you've done you can come inside welcome to the altar of forgiveness where the fallen can call and tears are wiped away Welcome to the First Church of Mercy. Take a seat on the front row of grace. And we're not here to judge you. You can find that anywhere. But we're called to love you. And you are welcome. First Church of Mercy, where the doors of love swing open wide. No matter who you are or what you've done, you can come inside. Welcome to the altar of forgiveness, where the fallen can fall and tears are wiped away. Welcome to the First Church of Mercy. Take a seat on the front row of grace. Welcome to the first church of mercy. Welcome to the first church of mercy. I'm so glad that I didn't have to meet qualifications. God, I, I couldn't ever done that, brother Jeff. We we couldn't have done anything to earn what we've got. It's because God loved us so much, He sent His Son to die for us. That's our qualifications. He loves us. Sister Sonia, you ready to say?
Sometimes it's going to come my way. Things I don't understand is going to come my way. But you know what? I'm going on. I have to carry on. Each and all, every one of us, things are going to come your way, but you're going to have to carry on. Sister Debbie, are you going to sing this morning? Before I sing, I, I really want to share something that's on my heart. And uh, hopefully it'll mean something to you all because it meant something to me this morning. I was laying in bed before I got up and I was praying and I was calling out each and every name and praying for everybody. And we've been praying that God would send revival in our hearts. And I was laying there, and it was just like the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, however he speaks to us, Brother Gary, that it said, listen for the rain. Listen for the rain. And I'm laying there, and I'm going, listen for the rain. And so I got up, and uh, I knew that in the Bible there was a place where it talked about the former and the latter rain in Joel. And so I pulled out my Bible and I read that. And when I read that, to me, when he was talking about the former rain, he softened the soil. And then when he brought the latter rain, that's when we start to grow. And he's telling us to listen for the rain. He's ready to grow us. It's time. It's time for us to get our foot Sister Melinda, on that solid rock. We've got to do that. And I thought about our kids, and I prayed that God, his spirit, would touch all the way from little Elijah all the way up to the oldest one in here, each and every heart. And uh, I, don't, I want our kids to know Aaron, Javon, Listen to me. Jesus paid a debt. When we sin and we're growing up in sin, we can't pay that debt. And it just keeps growing. And I don't know if you know what that means. But God traded his son for us. As sinful and unrighteous as we are, God traded his only begotten son so that we could be saved. And there's no other way. We have to come through Jesus Christ to our Lord. And I pray that one day I see my grandchildren touched in their hearts, that they come to this altar and they know what it means to give their hearts to God. Because we all, you know, sometimes I feel like, and this thought went over in my head this morning, we get up on Sunday morning, and, and I've had the same thought, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to be in church. But we have an obligation, our obligation is Sunday morning. But Sunday night and Wednesday night's optional. And we, we should count it a privilege every time we come into the house of the Lord. He said, you know, let us be glad when it's time to come into the house of the Lord. Come anticipating and wanting to know what God has for you to do today. He paid a, he paid a price. And how, how much we sin, we know how much it, our sin is. Because look at the price it took to pay for it. And he gives us each and every one that chance. Be glad. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. It was growing every day, but Jesus paid it all for me. He gave his life on Calvary. He died for men like you and me. What a savior.
say it's enough. And he's going to split those eastern skies. And you know what? It'll be too late. It'll be too late. Because one of these days, he said, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We heard Brother Randy talk about that recently. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. And then you know what? Then when that happens, he shows us the glorious heaven. He comes, he's showing us what we're going to miss. And then the doors are closed. And oh, I just hope everybody will give their heart to God in time, in Jesus' name. God loved you so much, so much, he sent his son. The thing that gets me is he was willing to come. Amen. He was willing to come and die Amen. for me, for you. He didn't have to, but he was willing to do that. Amen. If you, there'll be no children's church today. It's family day, first Sunday of the month. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of John, chapter 18. When you get to the book of John, chapter 18. If you're able, would you stand in reverence to reading God's Word? <coughs> Verse 33 says, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, saying, Thou this thing of myself, sayest thou this thing of myself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and a chief priest has delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should be not delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find no fault, or I find in him no fault at all. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord, we thank you for this time that we can gather together. And Lord, we're needy people. Lord, we need your touch this morning. Lord, I pray that you'd let us preach in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the music that we've had and the songs that have been sung and the testimonies that we've heard. And Lord, I pray for your anointing just for a little while this morning. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you bless those that are out sick. Lord, I, there's many out this morning. And Lord, I pray for those that were just didn't feel like coming this morning because they wanted to sleep, Lord. I pray that you disturb their sleep for them this morning, Lord. Lord, I pray that you Put it within them a need to be in your house when the doors are open. Lord, I pray that you would bless your people this morning. Lord, let us realize that you are a loving God. And Lord, that you, even in the world we live today, are still in control. It's just exactly like you said it would be according to your word. And Lord, I, unless you decide to come back soon, it'll get even worse. Lord, I pray that you'd have your way in this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe seated. I, I, Pilate asked a couple of questions in this scripture that I read to you this morning. I want to, Jesus didn't really answer all of those, but I, I, if, uh, if he had, of, I, I've been thinking about, he said, I, I, he said uh, what hast thou done? 
what hast thou done? And I've thought about that. What has my Jesus done? And if, if, if I could uh, just uh, beg your pardon for just a little while, I'd like to answer a little bit of that. First of all, here's one thing he did. He left his throne in glory and came through the avenue of a little Jewish virgin girl and grew up and lived on this earth for 33 and a half years so that you don't have the excuse to say, I'm facing some, something that he doesn't know about. Uh, he knows about every trial and every trouble that you've ever had. He's faced those situations. Uh, and here's something else that he, that he did. Uh, he went to an old rugged cross and shed his blood. Uh, the Bible says in, in John chapter 19 that forthwith came blood and water when the old soldier stuck a spear up in his side. Uh, uh, blood for the remission of sins uh, and water representing the Holy Ghost. Uh, here's something else he done when he ascended back to heaven. Uh, he sent that comforter of the Holy Ghost so that you and I uh, would have a helpmate that would live and reside uh, in our hearts to get us through this place. Uh, I realize that we've, we've faced the losses of loved ones. I realize that Sometimes it's a very hard situation, uh, and it's not something that we ever get over. Uh, it's something that we got to lean on uh, the Lord uh, to get through. It's something that we have to realize that if they're born again, uh, that we'll see them uh, uh, one day in the future again uh, when we all get there. Uh, could I tell you, uh, my uh, my friend, uh, that that he is a, a sovereign God, that he knows uh, all your, he even knows your thoughts that you think in private. Uh, and I'm telling you uh, that some of us need to change our way of thinking this morning. And could I tell you this this morning that uh, he is a loving God, uh, and I don't care. Uh, he, he sang the. The, the song, uh, I don't, God doesn't care about your past. He cares about your present, uh, and he cares about your future. Uh, and could I tell you, my friend, uh, I don't know about you, and there's some people that's done some wicked things in this world that, that they uh, maybe are even ashamed of and, and have repented for. Uh, but I, could I tell you, if God's forgiven you, uh, you have no right to, uh, to judge someone else. Uh, if God's forgiven that other person, uh, what we need to do is bind together uh, and even more. Uh, I realize that some of you... Uh, uh, are sad because my wife and I uh, have resigned the church, uh, and I uh, believe me, you're no sadder than we are uh, because we love every one of you, and this church has been, uh, it's special to us. Uh, and somewhere down the road, uh, uh, hey, we might be back here. I don't know, uh, but could I tell you, uh, God's already got a man picked out for you. It's just up to the, the uh, leadership in this church to, uh, uh, to be patient enough to find that man. Uh, and could I tell you this too, uh, that uh, you've got men within the church that are perfectly capable of stepping in uh, and filling in uh, and taking care of the church uh, until you find the right pastor. Uh, and I want you to know that, uh, uh, hey, uh, and uh, I've thought about this too, uh, that I've, I've had uh, people tell me, well, uh, you just don't think enough to, to call me or come by and check on me. Uh, could I, t could I ask you this, folks? Uh, and I'm not talking about anyone here, uh, but does it your phone? Can't you call out on your phone uh, just as well as I can call you? And could I tell you, uh, when your new pastor comes, uh, you need to get behind him, uh, you need to support him, uh, and you need to do what you can uh, to help build this church. Uh, 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 that, that's not part of my message. That's just throw that in there for you. Uh, and could I tell you, uh, he asked him, what hast thou done? Uh, and could I tell you, uh, could I bring this down a little bit more on a personal level? Uh, and could I tell you uh, that uh, here's some things he's done for this uh, old redneck country boy. Uh, when I was about uh, nine or ten years old, uh, one Sunday or one Sunday night uh, in a little old Assembly of God church uh, that's cl been closed up for years. In fact, uh, I think they've even bulldozed the building down, a little old block building uh, that would have sat uh, in about the whole building would have sat in about half this auditorium. Uh, but could I tell you uh, the Holy Spirit? Spirit got a hold of me one Sunday night. I was 
sitting on the back row, uh, and uh, I, I, I don't know what it was at the time, uh, but I knew that I had to do something. Uh, and I got up and ran, ran into the altar, uh, and I prayed there that the Lord had saved my soul. Uh, and that old preacher that was preaching, uh, he, he preached hard. Uh, once, uh, I know most of you heard this, but uh, I'm, pr I'm doing the preaching this morning, so I'll just go ahead and preach it like, like I remember it. Uh, I've seen Sunday mornings when he got preaching so hard, uh, he spit his false teeth out, uh, and, and uh, everybody kind of giggled, but hey, uh, the Holy Spirit had that church uh, uh, in, in his place. Uh, he just caught him in his hand, stuck him in his pocket, and never missed a beat preaching. Uh, and could I tell you, uh, if it wasn't for old-time preachers like that, uh, and it wasn't men of God uh, that God has anointed, that God's called into the ministry, uh, and we wouldn't be set, we wouldn't be here today uh, enjoying the blessings of God like we are. Uh, but I fell into that altar. Uh, and by the way, it was on a Sunday night. You said that's optional. Uh, I don't really think it's optional. Uh, I think if you're a child of God, you ought to want to be here uh, when the doors are open. Uh, uh, and that's just my opinion, so you can do with it what you will. Uh, but I'm telling you, if he can bless you on a Sunday morning, he can bless you on a Sunday night too. Uh, and could I tell you uh, this? Uh, and people gathered in around the altar, and I really didn't know what to pray for, uh, but they prayed with me uh, and told me how to pray. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, when I got up from that altar, uh, I went to school on Monday morning, and I, and I felt different than I did uh, the day before. Uh, could I tell you, in the, in the probably 50-some uh, years since then, uh, close to way well, yeah, out 50-some years since then, uh, uh, he's not changed. Uh, the Holy Spirit's still the Holy Spirit. Uh, he said, if I go away, uh, I prepare a place for you. Where you are, where I am, you may be also. Uh, could I tell you what he's done for me? Uh, he's blessed my life throughout my years. Uh, I've not always been what I should, uh, but you can ask my wife. Uh, when we get to where, when we got to where we needed to be, uh, and for God, uh, he got to where he needed to be for us. We needed him to be for us. Uh, could I tell you for the last uh, 15 years, uh, after I ran from the ministry for 15 years, uh, God's blessed us more in that 15 years uh, than he has in the 30-some before that. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, uh, and I don't have to hold back because I ain't going to be here but two or three more weeks. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, uh, when the church gets to where it needs to be, the, God will bless the church. Uh, it will grow, uh, and it will prosper, uh, and we'll see souls saved. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, uh, that's what God's done. That's what Jesus Christ has done for a lost and dying world. For a lost and dying world. I don't, I, hey, Brother David, I, I'm glad that he can take two old competitive rednecks uh, and calm them down a little bit uh, and, t and teach them about the ways of the Lord uh, that they can sit and worship him uh, and even get along with each other. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, back in the day, uh, hey, uh, David told me about uh, uh, his softball and basketball days uh, and I, I'm, I'm the same way. Uh, we've got more in common than most of you think back in our younger days. Uh, we'd fight it to drop a hat, and if you didn't drop it, we might even drop it ourselves. Uh, I'm telling you, but God's took that away from me. Uh, I'd rather see you blessed by the Lord than to, than to smack you upside the head anymore. Uh, but I'm telling you, sometimes uh, God needs to smack some of us up beside the head uh, so get our attention uh, so that we'll see that he is uh, uh, my almighty God, uh, so that he'll, we'll see that he is uh, in control, uh, so that we can see uh, that he can change an old redneck life and, and put the blessings of God upon them and, and change their whole uh, outlook on life. Uh, I don't know how we ever stayed married. I really don't. I don't know how you put up with me for all those years. See if she can love me and put up with me when I was that way. Can you imagine how much more God loves you and put up with your ways? And I'm tell here to tell you this morning, he can change your ways. He can make you 
soft-spoken. He can make you depend on him. He can guide your life. He can change your life. Boys, you look up here at me for just a minute. The best decision that you'll ever make in your life is to let Jesus Christ come into your heart and your life and guide your life. It won't make it all that much easier, uh, but it'll make you have a, a peace of mind in your heart and your life, knowing that when this life is over, uh, we've got a, a place in heaven. Uh, and I, I, I realize some of you young people might think that all you just old fogies are just telling us that, uh, that, that we need, that, hey, we want to live our own life and go the way that we want to. Uh, I'm telling you right now, you'll have a life full of heartache uh, if you go your own way and listen to the devil as he tries to get you into things that you shouldn't be in. Uh, and and uh, let me just uh, change that on a little bit here. Uh, sometimes some of us older people think that we got to do what we want to do, uh, and we, we want to get out there and uh, just live it up and have a high old time. Uh, could I tell you this morning, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm having a high old time this morning. Uh, I'd rather be here uh, than the best bar in Springfield. Uh, I'd rather be here uh, than, than anywhere else this morning. Uh, I'd rather be here experiencing what I'm feeling uh, than, uh, than uh, hey, I, I know some of you like uh, uh, s uh, great singers, and uh, some of you have been to the Reba concert. Uh, I'm not much into country music, uh, uh, but I'm telling you, if you just let go and let God have his way, uh, he'll make you, he'll bless you just as much as listen to the great singer that you love and enjoy. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I've been to a few concerts in my life, uh, and I had a good time. Uh, and you know, I think every one of them, uh, I was clapping for every song, uh, and I was enjoying the singing. Uh, and it wasn't all, always just a, even in a gospel concert. What I'm trying to tell you this morning uh, is we can be as happy as we want to. If we're happy in the Lord, uh, he'll smooth out some of those rough patches in our life for us. Uh, but Pilate... Jesus, they had already been taken before the Sanhedrin court. And uh, here's a couple of points I want you to get before I'm done this morning. The Sanhedrin court had sent him to Pilate. And Pilate didn't, uh, Pilate was, he was just a cop out really. He, he, was, he didn't want to get involved in it. He didn't even like the Jewish people. But see, here, here's the point I want you to get. The Jewish law, if he had been crucified under the Jewish law, he would have been stoned to death. Huh? Okay, they, they took him to Pilate. They presented, Pilate was a Gentile, by the way. They presented Jesus Christ to the Gentile by taking him to Pilate. Plus, they fulfilled scripture that was Old Testament scripture that he'd be hung from a tree. Did you get that? God had a plan, didn't he? See, he had a plan all along. See, the, the, the Jewish faith, think, faith think that uh, thought that they were the only ones, that they were God's chosen people. But see, we're not second choice. He just included us. See, they presented him to the Jews. The Jewish people presented him to Pilate, a Gentile. See, most people don't see that. Pilate was doing everything he could to keep from sending Christ to the cross. But see, let me, let me read this to you. If I can see. Pilate, first question he asked him was, What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. And I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou the king? Then Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Uh, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Here's the second question that Pilate asked him. He said, Pilate said unto him, 
what is truth? Uh, could I tell you this morning uh, that I know the truth? And could I tell you if you're born again this morning, you know the truth. Uh, in John chapter 14, about the fourth or fifth verse, Jesus said unto his disciples, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to me except, uh, cometh to the Father except by me. Could I tell you that hasn't changed, folks. Uh, you're not going to get there through Buddha. You're not going to get there through Muhammad. You're not going to get there through uh, any uh, overnight religion. You're not going to get there just by religion itself. It's a personal relationship uh, between you and Jesus Christ. Uh, and when you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, then you have that hope, so, uh, that blessed hope, uh, that no so salvation, uh, that when this life is over, uh, we can spend eternity together. Amen. See, we might be separated a little bit for a little while on this earth, uh, but one of these days we won't be separated anymore. We may never be exactly in this, this, uh, uh, w this amount of people here, There'll be others that are missing, and others that are missing will be here. We may never be in this exact situation again, but could I tell you, folks, uh, in, in a few years, I don't know how long. I, 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 it seems like it ought to be getting closer and closer all the time uh, that he does step out on the clouds and, and say it's time to, for my people to come home. Uh, and, I, hey, I'm looking forward to that day, uh, but he may come after me this afternoon. Uh, individually i don't know which it'll be but i know this for a fact according to the word of god uh, that w if you're born again christian and if you're doing your best to live for him uh, when he does come back for you whether it's by the grave or whether it's by the air that we'll be together for all eternity in heaven what is truth jesus christ is truth my friend Amen. he will never lead you to s astray he will never hey if that still small voice is whispering in your ear something that goes offensive to the word of God, then it's not of God. The Bible says to try the spirits. Yes. Try the spirits. Could I tell you how you try the spirits? First of all, through prayer. But second of all, through the word of God. If it doesn't line up with what thus saith the word of God, it's not doesn't line up at all and need to leave it alone. There you go. Need to leave it alone. And he asked the final question this morning. Then he goes back out and he said, let me read verse 38. It said, Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find no fault in him at all. You might find fault in me this morning. You might find fault. You might look around and say, find fault in people this morning. I'll, I'm not going to lie to you, because my wife would tell you that I've probably got my faults. I've overcome some of those faults over the years. Through the, with the help of the Holy Ghost and through the help of Jesus Christ. But I've still got my faults. I'm not perfect. And contrary to popular opinion, my wife isn't either. <laughs> but she's close, real close. <laughs> and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but none of you are perfect either. Amen. But here's here's... What I want to tell you, if the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to your life and you've allowed that helper, he said comforter, he said he'd, he'd send the comforter. That's what the Holy Ghost is this morning. And I know uh, you, you say, oh, this is a Baptist, Baptist church. Well, it's a free will Baptist church, so, but... Uh, you might be a little uncomfortable when I say Holy Ghost, or you want me to say Holy Spirit. They're the same one and the same thing. Amen. But the Holy Ghost is a comforter. And what it does, when you allow him to come into your heart and your life, it just gives you that blessed hope. 
that assurance that no matter what happens in this life, there's a helper, that you're never by yourself, that you're never alone, and that Holy Ghost will comfort you in that blessed hope. And if you'll read your Bible, hey, here, here's the mistake that Christians make, is that they'll read Facebook, they'll read James Patterson, they'll read, oh, I like to read. Uh, I, that's a, I don't know if you call that a weakness, but I read my Bible every day. But I read, I like to read detective stories, this and that. And sometimes they will involve you, and you can't just can't lay it down. My friend, if you're a Christian, that holy word of God ought to involve you and hard for you to lay it down. And, you, it, and no matter how many times I read mine, I see something different in it that the Holy Spirit points out to me from time to time. And I know in my old Bible that's about to fall apart, I've written down every message I've ever preached to a date and, the, and the, beside the scripture. But here's what you need to know is every once in a while when I read that scripture again, God will point out to me something that I didn't see the first time, that he didn't point out to me that first time. So it, even some of you <coughs> that take notes has come up to me and said, you preached that scripture on such and such a date. I said, oh, yeah, I might have used the scripture, but it's, I don't preach it the same way. And see, that's how fresh that the Holy Spirit can be with you. You might get different things out of the same scripture every time you read it. And I'm thankful, I'm thankful, folks, for that Holy Spirit that lives and resides in my life. You might find fault in me. Probably some of you probably already have. And some of you are a little irritated with me sometimes. And maybe one young man was just downright mad at me a couple of weeks ago. He wouldn't even, wouldn't even talk to me. But he loves me anyway, and I love him anyway. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, folks, We'll not be separated forever. We'll be together in glory. Amen. And although it breaks our hearts, we'll see you again, probably down here. But if we don't, we'll see you in glory. And could I tell you, Pilate was pretty sharp because he said, I find no fault in him at all and you might be you might think that God's mistreated you somewhere along the line but that's not true a lot of times when we think that it's our own fault because we've done something I hate to say stupid that's probably not politically correct anymore is it <laughs> yeah there's some stupid things going on isn't there A lot of our trials are our own fault. But let me say this to you. If you're a child of God this morning, you will have trials. Because the devil's not after those people that's living a wicked life. He's already got them. But he's after the church today. He's after you and I that are doing our best to live for him. But Pilate said, I find no fault in him at all. If you read your Bible and have given your life over to Christ, you won't find any fault in him either. Because he loves you unconditionally. Did you know that he loves the vilest sinner, the murderer, the any, any sin that you can name? He loves those people anyway. But unless they call upon his name and ask forgiveness for their sins, they'll not be where you and I will be. He said, I find no fault in him at all. Stand with me this morning.
it's a question that you need to ask yourself. Or I, I've got a question for you now as we get ready to have a song of invitation. What have you done? Same, pilot, same question that Pilate asked Jesus. I want to ask you this one. What have you done? What have you done? Have you asked him into, to be the Lord of your life? Or have you put it off? I pray that no one here has put that off. This is not complicated. The Bible says it's so clear that a child could understand. Well, I'm not sure. If, I've heard that say, and I'm not sure if that's in the scriptures. But it is so simple that a child can understand. So understand this this morning. That God loves you. That he sent his son to give his life as a sacrifice for our sins. That when we apply that blood to our lives through our prayers to the Lord, that he writes our name in the Lamb's Book of Life that will be open on Judgment Day. And if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, man, what a great day it'd be. There'd be celebration in heaven. I can just tell you, I think there'd be celebration right here. So they're going to sing a verse of invitation. And I'm asking you this question this morning. What have you done? What have you done? Have you made preparations for that one-way flight? My wife and my sister-in-law had booked a cruise that we were supposed to go on this summer. And because of COVID and some other things, they canceled that cruise. But folks, this